The EMIS web homepage provides shortcuts to various EMIS modules as well as sections containing information. Let's look first at some of those information sections. The bar at the bottom of the screen displays your role, username and location details. Bear in mind that a single user could have more than one role and or work at more than one location. It's always important if you do work at multiple locations to ensure that this location displayed is correct. If it's incorrect, one way to change it is to click on that section of the bottom bar and select and save the correct location. You'll notice that if there are multiple locations to choose from, this dialog box also lets you pick a default location. The organisation notepad displays messages for the whole practice team to see. You can see who the message is from along with the date and time that it was posted. These notepad entries can contain hyperlinks for example or just be text notes. Any user can add a note to the note page using the green plus symbol but remember that these notes are displayed on everybody's home page. Let's add a hyperlink to IGPR. In the bottom right hand corner of the home page you can include an RSS feed of your own choice, for example the BBC Health feed. To configure this click on the cog in the top corner of the section and enter your chosen RSS feed. Do not set this as the default for your organisation unless you know that this is what's required at your practice. The EMIS Health News section is worth monitoring as this will contain a wide variety of information that could be important, for example safety advisory notices, functional enhancements to the EMIS system or information about new templates released. By clicking on the COG icon in the top right corner you can select which categories of new items you want to be included in your personal EMIS Health News view. Towards the top right of the home page, there is an option to configure home page. You can configure your home page to display your appointments for the day and then have full use of the appointment session from the home page. Do this by ticking the box to show appointments on home page. Then use the spyglass to find yourself in the user list. You'll now see that the left panel of the home page displays your appointments for today. Note that you can use all the standard appointments functionality, for example keyboard instructions like S to send in or right clicking on the appointment slot. There's even a refresh button. To remove the appointments list from your home page, just return to the configure home page option and deselect. Next to the EMIS logo on the left, you can see the EMIS version number. This can vary from practice to practice, even within the same alliance or federation. So be aware that if you use more than one EMIS system, there might be differences in functionality due to version differences. You can also see here the date and time at which you last logged in and some backup information. Finally, there are links to the EMIS Support Centre, EMIS's own support website. Support Centre opens a new window and takes you directly into the EMIS Support Centre. As you're already logged into EMIS, you don't need to enter login credentials for the EMIS Support Centre as these are picked up automatically. My Incidents opens a new window and takes you to the EMIS Health Tracker where you can keep track of any incidents that relate to your EMIS CDB number to view their progress. The EMIS Health link opens a new window and displays the EMIS Health company website. Now let's look at the navigation options. The quick launch menu has a default set of quick links to some of the most commonly used EMIS modules. You can add to and remove these links by selecting the cog icon in the top right hand corner of this section. 
the dialog box that appears contains the links that are available to you based on your user permissions. So what's available in this dialog box will vary from person to person and role to role. To add a link into the quick launch menu, find and select it in the left hand panel. I'm going for Patient UK. Click on Add and the option will appear in the right panel. To remove an option, select it in the right panel and click on Remove. When you've finished, click on OK and here we see the Patient UK option now appearing in our Quick Launch menu. In a similar vein to the Quick Launch menu, at the very top of the screen is the Quick Access toolbar. Unlike the Quick Launch menu that's only available on the home page, the Quick Access toolbar is available at the top of the screen from everywhere within the EMIS system. This toolbar contains a set of icons by default for every user. Those being Return to previous page. This is a useful shortcut if you just want to go back to the previous page you were on without having to navigate through the system. Return to home page as you would expect, always brings you back to this home page. Send a screen message. This opens a dialog box which lets you type in a short message. Notice the limit of 500 characters. Mark it as urgent if you want to and then direct it to any user or multiple users by selecting them from the list of users who are online. You can include users who are offline when sending a screen message and the message will appear when they next log in. All messages appear in yellow banners across the top of the recipient's screen. If urgent, the message also appears in the middle of the screen and can be viewed from here. These yellow bars appear when there is something that you need to be made aware of. This one's telling me I have a screen message, but they could appear for a variety of other reasons. To view the message, click on the text in the yellow bar. Users can reply to messages, in which case you will receive the reply as a yellow banner message at the top of your screen. Note that if I try to get rid of a message by clicking on the red cross, then I'll be advised that this will delete the message permanently. The last default icon in the quick access toolbar is the patient find icon. Patient find dialog box is used to find any patient currently registered, inactive or deceased a separate video goes into more detail about efficiently finding patients using patient find and patient trace. Let's look at how the quick access toolbar can be configured for each user. To the immediate right of the icon bar is a small down arrow. Select this and then select customize quick access toolbar. The model is similar to the quick launch menu model. Pick an option from the left hand panel and select add or pick an option from the right hand panel and select remove. Commonly selected options are for example add a new user task, appointment book, consultations, lock session, mentor online, patient UK and population reporting. Now that configuration is complete, you can see the new icons displayed in the quick access toolbar across the top of the screen. Hovering over each icon will show a tooltip describing what it links to. The default place to go to navigate to a module, if you have no shortcut to it, is the EMIS ball. If in doubt, You'll find what you're looking for somewhere in the EMIS ball picking lists, as long as your user role gives you permissions to access the modules you're looking for. If a module doesn't appear in the EMIS ball list, 
that means that you don't have the appropriate permissions associated with your user ID. When the ball is clicked, a drop-down menu appears which contains headings for all the sections that you have access permissions for. Highlighting each option will present a list of subsections which can be selected. Let's take a look at some of these options in more detail. Find Patients will do the same as the Find Patient icon in the Quick Access toolbar. Let's find Penny Pretend Patient. Notice that selecting the patient opens up the patient pricey and this patient is now the active patient. More information about the patient pricey bar is included in a separate video. The session option, under the EMIS ball, opens up further sub-options. Clear patient will clear the patient pricey bar. Clearing patient information from your screen is a good habit to get into once you have finished with the patient in question. Change location is another way to change the location that you're currently recorded as working from. Remember that your current location is displayed at the bottom of the screen and it's important to ensure that this is always accurate. Lock session will lock this session, forcing you to put in your password when you return to it. This is useful if you are leaving your desk temporarily, for example, but you don't need to shut down EMIS altogether. This should be used in order to ensure that other users are not able to use EMIS under your login, also preventing other users from accessing areas of the EMIS system that they're not permitted to access themselves, if, for example, they have a more restricted RBAC view. For GPs, this is particularly important due to the higher level of access to patient identifiable and confidential information. Change password lets you change your own password. If at any time you suspect that your password is known by anyone else, it is your responsibility to change it. When you've done this, you will need to log out and log back in again in order for it to take effect. Log off logs you out of your EMIS session, but without closing EMIS down completely. It will leave the login screen displayed so the next user can log in without having to load EMIS first. Close application will close down EMIS altogether. Across the top of your screen, above where the patient pricey appears, you'll notice a bar that contains one or more quick links to sections of the Workflow Manager. These links not only provide a quick route into the relevant section of Workflow Manager, but also indicate how many items are in that particular inbox, and in red, you can see how many are urgent. Before moving on from ways of navigating around the EMIS system, there are two other methods that can be used. For users who prefer keyboard commands to mouse clicks, there are a set of keyboard commands behind the ALT key of your keyboard. If you press the ALT key, which is found to the left of the spacebar on a standard UK keyboard, you'll notice that a set of shortcut options appear over some of the options available on your screen. This is not a very effective way of navigating the system, but it's worth being aware of it, if only to, to be aware of what happens if you accidentally hit the ALT key. Once the ALT key shortcuts are visible, you can use these keys to navigate. For example, pressing ALT, then E, then A, then ENTER will take you to the appointments book. A more commonly used set of keyboard shortcuts is the function keys. Selecting the different function keys will do the following on a standard keyboard. That's the key navigation aids covered. You'll decide over time which are the most useful shortcuts and which are your favoured shortcut methods. To recap, you can configure the Quick Access Launch menu from the home page. You can configure the Quick Access Toolbar, which will be accessible from all screens. You can use the EMIS ball to navigate to any area of EMIS. And you can use the Alt key or Function keys if you prefer keyboard shortcuts. 
Finally, let's take a look at the EMIS Panic Alert button. In the top right corner of the EMIS screen, just below the standard Windows options for Minimize, Restore and Close, you'll find the Panic button. To trigger this Panic Alert, double-click this icon or press Shift and F1. This sends a Panic Alert message to all other workstations within your practice network. This option should only be used in the event of a threat to personal safety as it will trigger a message to all users. Once you've triggered the panic alert, the icon will display as blue until someone else responds to your panic alert, which they do by selecting respond in the panic message that appears on their screen. For your information, if another user sends a panic alert, a message like this will appear on your screen if someone else selects Respond, you will see the name of that individual also appear. That concludes this guide to navigating the EMIS system. Now try this quiz to see how much you've remembered.